Hello everybody, John here, and today the break saga is almost over. So we've got a complete set of newly upgraded brakes on the Jag. And today what we're going to be looking at is bleeding that system and more than that, changing the entire uh, fluid set throughout all the brake lines. So before we get on to that, in a very unusual move, because there's a hell of a lot of noise in the background, which is um, my doors moving around. Um, we're having 80 mile an hour winds at the moment in Lincolnshire. We are known as a bit of a linky, uh, linky? Uh, a bit of a windy county. It could be a leaky county as well. Um, and I have got a windsock on my uh, microphone, but just for your amusement, I'm just gonna take you outside for a second so you can see what sort of day we're having. The trees are well bent over. Yeah, it's looking uh, pretty bad. So, I'm going to turn around, you really realise how strong it is. Yeah. Skip back up the drive and get into the relative safety and warmth of the garage. Ooh. So, any noises? Can't do anything about it. Okay, so bleeding your brakes is essentially quite a simple task, but uh, there are two ways of going about it. If you've got a friend with you and you're just uh, bleeding the brakes to get rid of air, you've maybe changed. Uh, a set of pads, you've um, undone a brake line, one or two simple things, and you just want to force a little bit of air out, then the manual version of bleeding the brakes is completely fine. And that includes somebody in the wheel arch opening up the bleed nipple and somebody in the car pressing the brake and you're forcing out uh, fluid through the bleed nipple and then hopefully locking off the bleed nipple before you get to the end of the travel that's perfection, um, so that when the brake pedal comes back up, it doesn't draw any air back. And you continue that cycle until you've pushed out any air bubbles. I want to change all of the fluid in my car, plus I've had all the brakes off, I've had all the lines undone, and it's been stood with those lines open for quite some time. Plus I knew that the brake fluid was past its sell-by date anyway, and we'd done that brake fluid test using the uh, handy dandy tester that I showed you a couple of videos back. Um, I note that uh, a couple of the subscribers have got themselves one and I think it was Jeff Miners actually did a little video on using his that he'd obtained for a really really cheap price. So I can't really recommend these things enough because they're so cheap but yeah little uh, brake fluid testers there's another video you can have a look at this um, and you just dip it in press the button and it tells you whether your brake fluid's got uh, water in it or not and how much so I'm gonna go the other route and the other route is to pressure fill the system with uh, brake fluid it's quicker easier on your own it's the, really the only way and um, is far better for flushing out an entire system's worth of brake fluid. And to do that, you're gonna need, a very simple set of tools, a nine mil spanner. You're gonna need a glass jar that you can actually see through. So I'll go take a label off that. You're gonna need a pressure vessel and various caps and attachments and I've got this one uh, not because it's necessarily the best it's probably the most uh, recognizable in the UK anyway Gunson's Easy Bleed uh, Gunson's a reasonably well-known brand name at least in the UK for tuning tweaking kit for the uh, DIYer and all this really consists of is 
a bottle which you can fill up with brake fluid, a cap that goes on top of your brake fluid reservoir, and a pipe which you use to pressurise this bottle so that brake fluid is constantly being forced into the reservoir. And when the pedal is in the up position in your car, fully up, there is an open route for the fluid to go from the reservoir into all the brake pipes. As soon as you press the pedal down a little bit, that seals off the reservoir behind it and starts to force the fluid along. So with the brake pedal released, this is able to push brake fluid to every corner of your car. In terms of pressurising the bottle, uh, because I've got a compressor, I've got the little fitting on the end here which I can plug into my compressor, and you put about 2 psi, uh, 2 psi, let's go for 20 psi um, on it, or in a kit, and again, there's lots of different kits, they're all very similar, you'll typically get along with all the different caps for different sizes of reservoirs, you would typically get, there we go, one of those, and that is a tyre valve um, clip, sort of thing you use to pump up your tyres. That can be used to use a, one of your tyres to pressurise the vessel, using the pressure in the tyre. So, handy dandy. And the last two things, you're going to need a little length of plastic tube, preferably clear, that will push over your bleed nipple so you can see the fluid coming out. And your brake fluid. And if you're doing this on the XJ, XK8, same as me, you're definitely going to be wanting dot four. Um, you can upgrade to dot five, dot five plus, all those sorts of things. If you're going to do that, make sure you get everything out of your system and completely change it because um, compatibility issues and all the rest of it. So uh, just to reiterate, I bought four small bottles. These are half litre bottles. And with brake fluid, once you've opened it, it hasn't got much shelf life at all. Even sealed, they don't have much shelf life. We tested um, some brake fluid that I'd had hanging around for a little while and it was no good. So on the back of these bottles, there will be a sell-by date. And I'm going to try and show you this one. So this is a brand new bottle I've just bought. Today it is February 2020. And this says, used by, brackets, unopened, November 2020. So the manufacturer is telling you that this is only going to last eight months unopened. And bear in mind that's printed on their product that they're gonna sell and put on the shelf. So they are being very cautious and by actually writing that, you are quite likely to push this to one side and look for a later date on the shelf. So it's only damaging them. So they're not doing that to scaremonger. Brake fluid is hygroscopic. It absorbs water. It's trying to absorb water all the time. And water in your brake lines is a very bad thing. Corrosion, brake fluid boiling, all that sort of stuff. So, we've got brand new. So, let's get on. First of all, need to make my uh, coffee pot transparent. So I'll just cut the wrapper off of it. So, got my uh, pot with my tube. The noise you can hear increasing outside is the fact that it's now hailing and blowing 80 miles an hour. So, foil sealed cap. Wouldn't use it if it wasn't. Okay. And we're going to start by filling our pressurised reservoir. Next, 
for our cap on. And we're going to take that over to the bench. To the car, even. Next thing, I emptied this reservoir using a fluid extraction pump when I started the project. So what I'm going to do next, let's move my wing protector, is put fluid in here. You don't have to worry about getting this fully full. It's just worth taking it a fair way up so you don't keep having to just stop and refill your pressurised reservoir. And we're going to put the lid of our pressure vessel on. Hand tight but reasonably tight. I'm going to tuck that in there. And then the next thing I'm going to do is add some air to this airline. Let's see if we can get you close enough to see what happens with the pipe work. Appalling outside. My step is underwater. Quite a lot of my driveway is underwater. Wow. The water is being driven under the garage door. And with that popping sound, the microphone connector just got just a little bit too wet, and that was the end of the sound. So uh, continue with post-production commentary if that's the appropriate word so what we're doing now is connecting up the airline and you see the fluid shoot up the pipe and into the reservoir and that will keep the reservoir topped up and when I go into the wheel arch and start to bleed the brakes then the fluid will start to um, push its way back into the reservoir, topping it up as the fluid comes out of the bleed nipples. So what am I doing inside the wheel arches? Well, on each brake caliper, there is a bleed nipple. Uh, it's usually a silver color, but obviously could be dirty. And a seven or eight mil um, spanner is normally appropriate. Put your spanner onto the bleed nipple and then push on your clear bit of tubing. And when you undo or open the bleed nipple, you're allowing the air to escape and be pushed out by the brake fluid. So you have to wait quite a long, long time for the fluid to start emerging. And then carry on letting out fluid until you stop seeing bubbles come out with the fluid along the pipe. The bubbles will start off quite big, um, very easy to see like now. Um, and as you get further into bleeding it, they become much smaller, harder to see. The system holds about one and a half litres of fluid. So if you're doing an entire change, then your guide is to try and take about one and a half litres out. I'd already taken out a fair amount with the um, extraction pump before I started, so it's not quite so scientific, unfortunately, about how far I go with the bleeding. When you're doing an entire system bleed like this and changing the fluid, it can take a little while. So a good idea is to get a longer piece of clear hose and attach that to your bleed nipple and put your container on the floor, put the the uh, pipe into the neck and cable tie it on so that you're not spilling brake fluid everywhere. And this means you can bleed the brakes uh, for a little longer. 
you can nip back and look at your bottle and reservoir and make sure that you're not running out of fluid. The sequence in which you bleed your brakes is actually important on a car like the Jaguar XK8. It has a long system for its brake lines. It flows through ABS pumps, valves, all sorts of clever bits and pieces. And so you want to follow the correct bleeding sequence. And for our cars, that is front left, front right, rear left, rear right. And that's as viewed when you're sitting inside the car. Although certainly not a precise science, my preference for doing this is to bleed the front left until the bubbles disappear, or at least the majority of them. If you've got tiny little um, specks, pinhead bubbles coming through, then maybe move on. Then do the same with each of the brakes, following that sequence of front left, front right, rear left, rear right. And then go back to each of them and bleed it again, this time waiting until you get rid of every last trace of tiny bubbles. In doing so, if you also know how much fluid you're putting in, you can make sure that you spread out putting the one and a half litres amongst the full system. You can usually tell when you've got the system uh, completely purged because the uh, clarity of the brake fluid, if it's been in there a little while, will be different. It's quite dark when it's in the system and it's aged and the stuff you're putting in has more the clarity of petrol. If you are doing a full system change like myself, you'll probably have to top up your pressure uh, bottle several times during the whole approach. What you want to do though is when you know that you've almost finished, you want to make sure that you bleed out until the pressure vessel is completely empty and it empties the pipe going down to your reservoir and it lowers the level in your reservoir just a little. And that's purely because you're going to take the cap off of your brake fluid reservoir. And if you do that while there's still fluid in the neck, in the bottle, in the tube, then you're going to get brake fluid everywhere. And it's a really effective paint stripper. So let the, the level go down a little inside your brake reservoir and then you can remove the cap and top it up to the right level straight from your fresh bottle of brake fluid. I mentioned earlier that it's reasonably easy to see when you've got all the old fluid out. This is the last jar full of the brake fluid that I uh, removed. And you can see its clarity is really not good. So now I've got a little clear plastic container I'm just going to pour out some of the fresh fluid for comparison it is amber so you can't say uh, you know you wait for it to go clear that's not true i decided the best way to show this was to hold it up to my led light and try and compare them like that you see it's a muddy green color when you've got the old fluid versus a actual amber like petrol for the uh, new fluid. It's only at times like this that I realise A, I can't lip read, B, I usually have no idea what I'm talking about. So um, in a vain attempt to lip sync myself, I'll say whatever I fancy. Um, so yeah, brakes now fully completed, um, all round, restored, upgraded, and ready to go with new fluid and new hoses and the very next video that you guys are going to see in the brake saga will be the car back out on the road and me giving it a review and i'm going to try to understand what has changed if anything about the way the car brakes not only how quickly does it brake but also things like the feel 
the cold bite of the brakes, the hot bite of the brakes, brake fade, um, and the pedal feel, which is probably the most important thing. Is there still any elasticity left in that system? Or by changing the fluid and the lines, have we taken an awful lot of that out? I'm also interested to see how noisy the grooved calipers are. These are supposed to be relatively quiet, but grooved calipers can be quite noisy under braking. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Remember, if you're working on brakes and you're not competent or confident, get a friend to help. Um, following my actions will not necessarily make you safe. This is for your entertainment. But anyway, I look forward to seeing you real soon again on To The Garage.